Hi, this is Sonia from An Enthusiastic Reader. Today I am bringing you a book report that I wrote about Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. This book was published in 2019 and it also was the co-recipient of the 2019 Booker Prize. She had to share this prize with Margaret Atwood and I will talk about that at the end, but I do have feelings about that. The setting of this novel is primarily in London, but also throughout Great Britain, because it's about a variety of characters who all know each other in some tangential way, either through being family members or having worked together or been a student-teacher relationship. So we get to see a variety of women telling their stories to us in a non-plot-driven format. This is really not about plot at all, so if you're looking for some major action happening, you're not going to get it. Instead, you're getting the life stories, basically, of a number of characters, mostly all women, one non-binary character, and one man. And I would say that the man chapter is the least successful of all of them for me. I felt like he was added as an afterthought just to round things out, and it wasn't really necessary to have his story in here at all. Uh, but other than that, I really did enjoy seeing and think that Evaristo did a good job of differentiating the characters. All the voices were different. All Some of them, some of the women were not very likable or they were very just middle of the road. They didn't have a lot of ambition or they didn't, they settled very easily and didn't have a lot that they were striving for. But I think that was the point is that not every story needs to be extraordinary. Just because it's a bunch of stories about black women, they don't have to follow the stereotypical path that we might want them to follow for our, our own enjoyment or uh, edification. It's good to see people just being people. So we've got everyone gathering to see Ama, who is the main character, who has written a feminist, very proto-feminist play about Amazonian women. And that play really has no bearing at all on the plot of the story. It's just that she has finally attained a level of achievement and people are coming to see her play being performed. Some people are wishing her well, some people aren't. Everyone has an agenda, but it's all very low key. That's really not the point of the novel at all. So we get to see young, old, middle brow activists, gay characters and straight characters, one non-binary character. The novel's characters express their desires and disappointments of being part of a patriarchy in British society. And that is also kind of an unseen character, the patriarchy that, you know, tears tears down the ambitions and lives of some of these women. My favorite chapters were Yaz, who is Amma's daughter, because I really like the generational divide. They all have different outlooks on the world based on when they were born and how they were raised. And Yaz is full of life and energy and a, a really a bright character. She was fun to, to watch and fun to see interact with her friends. The other chapters I really liked were the last chapters with Grace and Hattie. And these are a mother-daughter, and they have a very intricate storyline together in these two chapters. So I really enjoyed that part of the book. What was Evaristo trying to achieve? And I think she was trying to have so many viewpoints in this novel, meaning to show that Black women are not a monolith. They all have, there's a variety of experiences, a variety of voices, and that they have just as much ability to change, grow, be petty, hurt each other, support each other as any other group. And it just brought them to life. The novel also shows that life is never easy. That there are lots of disappointments. There are lots of obstacles that everyone has to face. Um, who should read this book? I think open-minded people who are interested in people and interested in seeing lives that they may not have imagined before are people, are readers who would really benefit from reading this novel. I think some book clubs might like to read it. Uh, I think there would be a lot to talk about, um, comparing and contrasting characters and just like opening yourself up to the spirit of the book, which is a little bit less structured than people may expect 
from commercial fiction. Okay, here's my biggest question. Was it fair for Evaristo to have to share the Booker Prize with Margaret Atwood? I would say no, absolutely it was not fair. It was a terrible decision on the on the part of the committee or the judges for them to A, defy the rules that said there has to be one winner, ridiculous. And then B, the, the novel was, uh, Margaret Atwood's novel was not a great novel. No one said this is such an achievement that you must share it with the other book that is truly an achievement. And I feel like it waters down the win, even though Evaristo was incredibly gracious about it. But why are we asking her to be gracious about something she shouldn't have had to do? She deserved to win that prize all by herself. It was not supposed to be in a Lifetime Achievement Award for Margaret Atwood. She can win the Nobel for that later. She's a great writer. She didn't need this. And I'm sure she probably didn't want it either. And it must have been hard for her to even have to uh, try to smile through the whole thing. Um, just, it was not fair and I don't like it. Did I like this novel, love this novel, or remain indifferent? I liked it. I didn't love it enough because I didn't ever feel fully immersed in the lives of the characters because there are so many characters and that's not the fault of the novel. That's just kind of the, the after effect of having a book with so many voices. So I liked it. I liked the writing. She was able to differentiate enough that I didn't feel we were hearing the same stories over and over again. And all in all, it was a four out of five. That's all I have for now. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.